All right, so today we're going to be working on this truck a little bit. It's uh, the donor. This is the one we're taking the rollback bed off of. It is a mid-80s uh, GMC. It's got an 8.2 Detroit in it. It's got a spun main bearing. It still runs. It'll start. It'll move. It'll drive. But uh, I thought it was best just to take the rollback over and winch it up on and bring it over. So we're going to get this thing unloaded, and we're going to start taking the bed off. We need the bed, the PTO, the hydraulic tank, um, the hinge pins, uh, everything associated with the rollback bed. We've got to get off this thing and then get that truck out of our way. All right, so we're going to take this bed off. The first thing i got to do is drain the hydraulic tank, which is up underneath there. I don't know how many gallons it is. Let's assume it's probably going to be 15 gallons maybe. And... Uh, we're gonna get it all drained and then take that hose loose off the pump and let it drain into the drain pans. That's why I got two smaller pans so I can take the hoses and put them down low, make them the lowest point. Let it uh, drain out the best we can because every time I do this, it's a hydraulic mess. All right, the hydraulics are drained. Pressure line will not come off the back of the pump, so I took it loose from the valving not ideal but it'll be fine I just pulled this pin out it goes from one bracket clear over to the other side to the other bracket and through these arms it wouldn't come out so I brought the grate all over and I put put a ratchet binder around that uh, pin hooked it to that side of the carriage and just tried to drive it out while I was beating on the arms to shake it loose and it came out so now we're uh, Ready to move on to the back pivot pins. Let's hope these are a little less eventful would be great, but I doubt it. Let's see. Both of these pins turn in the bed portion of the sleeve, but they're locked up, froze up in the frame portion of the sleeve. So let me get going on that and get it out. All right, so I've cut the pivot pin sleeve out of the rear frame section. So I don't want any of this old schmegmar mess here. We're going to make our own. And what we're going to do is the frame on the original truck was narrower than what we have so this height will not protrude past the frame it needs to be flush with the frame and I can put a washer in here uh, for spacing so it's the pivot right there it doesn't rub but what I need to do is get all this crap off so I have a clean surface to work with and then go from there all right got both my pins out I'm gonna let them cool we are ready for a test fit on the new truck so I need to get everything out from underneath it and we're gonna get the new truck under here and see where we're at okay so we're test fitting I'm happy with the gap between the bed and the cab that's about what we're going for and before we get too excited we have to make sure that the slide cylinder is in the right position meaning it's uh, collapsed the ram is in as far as we want it before we start marking anything because if we set it where it's at and that thing happens to be out some you know the bed shifted back some then we'd never be able to get it to go all the way forward so so far so good now what I'm gonna do is take some measurements see how close we are to the back of the cab measure from the back pins to the leaf spring hanger mounts and stuff like that and let's see where exactly we are and then I can start marking out for where I want to cut now you can see maybe you can the subframe is lower than the actual flatbed now up in the front there's going to be some brackets that hold it where we want it so back here what we need to do is this frame it went on snug I don't know how I feel about that but 
Um, this frame can't just be cut off blunt because this will hit it. It'll have to come in at an angle like this and be cut off. What we're going to do is lay a piece of angle iron in between the two, cut this out. Yeah, that's a better plan. We'll lay angle iron in here and then just lay the the bushings and the mounts in that angle iron so our frame will be cut kind of like right here to about here and that gives us all the clearance we need up here and the angle iron will stiffen up the back of this so what we have to do is make sure we're square on the frame once we're happy with where we're at we'll mark this where these are and we'll mark the centers so I know where the pivot needs to be and that'll tell me where I can lay the angle and where the, the inside sleeve can go Okay, so I didn't have the right angle. Uh, I needed this angle to be a half inch taller and half inch longer to fit right so that the bed will sit here the way I want it. So what I did is I took some truck frame that was 3 8 thick and I cut it with the plasma cutter the exact height that I wanted and the lip that we wanted so it can lay in here. And it's already rounded so our bushing or a pin or sleeve whatever you want to call it will sit right in here and same thing over there I've got this ratchet strap on here so we're going to hold the frame right at 34 inches like I want and I'm going to grind this corner to match the frame so we can lay our weld down here and just continue down and keep going after we get that done and these are welded in place this is the next step I'm going to put this down here so it'll go under here and it's not cut the length yet but we'll be able to weld it in underneath so we're transferring a lot of this weight and making this almost a boxed frame and I'm going to do the same thing on that side and that should be the end of the back and then after this is all welded in we'll uh, go ahead with the we'll start with the PTO pump all right, so we're under the truck now, and I've got all the studs installed for the PTO and the gears there, which is a great thing. And we're going to try and reuse the PTO. From the other truck, I looked up the two transmissions, and it looks like they will interchange, but we're going to have to check the uh, spacing and basically have the gear here, how much play we have in the gear, how much clearance we have between this gear and the other. Alright so I'm fitting the PTO on here and I pull this cover off because I need to check the backlash which is how much play there is or space between the PTO gear and the gear on the transmission for the, that drives the PTO gear and there's a spec on that and you can see we have play but I want to take that off I'm going to use a, a dial indicator and see how much exactly we have all right so these are going to be the pivot bushings that are welded to the frame so this is kind of the bottom but i got the rolled edged up so i can get everything set up but i've made these to go on the outside of that bushing because i have you know x amount of room to work with so what we're going to do is lay a weld into here so we can weld this bushing or sleeve whatever you want to call it to this piece of half inch plate steel and then we're going to weld this steel to the truck frame so we get the most weld we can by going all the way around here and all the way around the back of course of course I have to set my depth yet we're not exactly perfect yet but regardless um, that's what we're going to do so we'll build these as a unit and then they'll sit in the truck they actually sit like this because the truck frame rolls right here so we'll be able to get a nice weld here and here and the same thing on that side we'll get the most surface area we could have probably just laid that in the corner welded down here and welded down here but I really want to tie that truck frame because it's like an L shape if you can imagine remember it's an L shape I'd like to tie this lower leg with this leg and I think this is a great way to strengthen the whole thing up might be a lot, a lot of extra work for what we're doing, but now we'll be able to weld here, here. All this will be welded together. Should make for a really nice hinge point. 
I need to make pivot pins. And I'm using this old truck kingpin out of a semi. And I need to drill a hole in it so that I can put a locking bolt through it. So what I'm doing is I'm using a masonry bit, a little bit of oil. This pin's hardened steel. It's very tough to drill. Well, the evolution carbide saw cut this truck kingpin. Let's see. Got our hole drilled. I dressed the corners, just a little small chamfer. Cut the edge of it off. So now we have one complete. We got one more to do, but a lot better than 145 bucks a piece to have them made. And this was my favorite. Free, just some time. All right, so I got my hinges made. As I show you a picture of that, you can see how I put all that together. But uh, you know, it turned out pretty decent. We're gonna we're gonna set the bed down now. We're gonna put a washer. I made left enough room for a washer in between here and this face, so the washer can turn independently. So this isn't wearing into this because I imagine he's gonna use the crap out of this bed. So okay, let's set her down. All right, so this is what I'm working on next. This is the bracket that needs to go on here that holds the pivot arms. I had a preliminary mark on here, um, but I've moved the bed just a little bit, so I'm going to clean those all off. I'm going to run the, the rod through this, put the brackets on either side, and we're going to jack it up in the center of the rod because it goes clear across. And hopefully there's no interference with that drive shaft. I think I looked at it before and there wasn't. Um, once we do that, we're going to mark our holes and get them drilled and get it bolted in. It looks like nothing's going to interfere with it. There's not going to be anything in the way. So that's a beauty. But first thing I have to do is get the front of the bed set right. I have half inch. Yeah, you can't see it, but in between the subframe and the bed is a half inch gap. And the frame of the bed and the frame of the truck is two different things. The, the subframe, I'm telling you, is two different things. You can see the subframe right here, right down here, and then the actual frame of the, the bed. So if you look, you might be able to tell right now it's going downhill, which I don't know if that's really a bad thing, but <clears throat> I assume the best thing I can do is put it the same way front to rear. So that's what I'm going to do. So maybe they give you an idea of how the geometry works on this thing. Um, the load angle's pretty steep, you know. I mean, but understand, he's not hauling people's cars. He's hauling scrap junk cars. So scraping a bumper isn't going to matter to him. It's more about being able to get it up on the bed than anything. So 
and you see these valves he's going to have to rebuild at some time um, all right so we got these arms all mounted back in I mounted it right in that cross member worked out well there was other bolt holes but I didn't want to drill holes in my cross member on the edge of them to use those so I drilled three new holes instead of the two in that bracket and then I put in the three others now these are all 5 8 bolts on here those are halves those are 5 8 with some three quarters and they're also mixed in um, here's a better look at this bracket I made for the torque arm um, a lot of guys thought that was overkill but trust me if you see what he's gonna do to this truck I'm not sure that's overkill uh, suitable it'll work but I'm not sure it's overkill so we got those on and the front where the bed rests uh, one I ran out of grade 8 bolts but I needed to get it in here so I can get the bed situated and get it get my holes drilled so we used the grade fives um, he's gonna swap these out there's no lock on the front of this bed all right it's supposed to have these two little whatever you want to call these hooks um, this one's busted off right here he's gonna build something for it he's probably gonna come off the side of this with one of those spring-loaded snap binders one for each side and it'll probably come down in this area right here so we're not gonna do anything with it he'll swap these bolts out to grade eights we need to run the hydraulic pressure line from the pump all the way back to that valving once we have that run we're gonna we're gonna come off of that if it's long enough we're gonna come out of our fitting over here and come over this line this side and get this all together and then we have to tie up our hoses brake lines electric lines all that stuff and then we need to secure all the hoses up through here because they were just laying on the last truck uh, what else was I gonna tell you got all that oh if you notice there's no filter on this hydraulic system um, I told him now is the time to do it I mean look there's there's a splice right there more than likely it's probably that went into a filter I'm guessing uh, be a really good time to put a filter on while the system's empty all right we're moving along I got the pressure line in nice sweeping turn I got everything zip tied to my brake lines and my wiring so it can't move um, it's even and I bolted it to the cross members there's little um, brackets from the factory to hold that stuff so we put that back in and routed it all back there and then the ones that come up here I zip tied all these together and I've been fixing leaks this fitting right here was leaking where it goes in the winch you can see how it it actually dripped and cleaned the paint off so I cleaned that one up. The other one apparently was just spray because it wasn't leaking. And let's see, I got the wiring hooked up and zip tied out of the way. So we got turn signals and brake lights. We have uh, marker lights. Now I only wired it to the bed, the truck to the bed. He's going to replace all this wiring as he gets time. Right now he's just in a mad rush. He just really wants to get uh, get the truck finished up so he can use it. I've got a few places I need to get some old radiator hose and go around it, but um, this stuff can't move. Now, a pressure line, when you go to use hydraulics and release them, it's going to move a little bit. So anywhere it's close to anything, we're going to put some protective wrap on there. We, we need to filter that hydraulic oil because every time a ram goes in and out you're going to take some contaminants with it so we need to filter it so we got this it's not as big as we'd like but the inlet's right and it is for hydraulic fluid so
I made a bracket for it. And what we're going to do is take two of the bolts out over there and put my bracket on those two bolts and let it come out. It's going to sit right about like that where those two hoses are. So let me get this unbolted and uh, we'll get it in place. Okay, so I took this fitting off and I cleaned it all up, cleaned the threads up, and put it cleaned inside here with brake parts cleaner, and then put thread sealer on the threads of this. I don't use Teflon tape, it's an actual liquid Teflon. And then I went to go put it together, I cleaned these threads up, and this is not a pipe thread. This is an actual uh, bubble, kind of a um, flare fitting type deal inside this fitting. So I didn't need this on here, so I like to back off. It's not supposed to be on there, and then put it back together. But now we're all done. I just need to mount the um, filter housing to the bracket that I made and uh, fill it full of hydraulic fluid. Then we're going to give it a shot, see how it works. I put five gallons in. I ran it a little bit to circulate the um, hydraulic fluid. And let's see where we're at here. doesn't even register so we got five gallons in it I guess I need another five gallons all right we're gonna mount the toolbox and the bed sits up above the frame a little bit so we're gonna take advantage of that and bring our toolboxes up as high as we can the toolbox is still two inches lower so I could plasma cut this off if I wanted to or put it in a chop saw or whatever I don't think it's a big deal we're probably just gonna leave it um, now we have to clear the bracket for the swing arms or tilt arms, whatever you call them, and that's six inches. So when the, this box is 60 inches long, so it's going to come clear down to here. So when this bed comes back down this way, you can see this mark I've made. I took a pencil underneath the arm when it was down, so I know where it is, and our our bracket is going to be in this area so I have to leave out six inches for this and this arm to go behind the toolbox okay so I'm happy with that I mean I would like that toolbox to be up quite a bit more but I got to thinking that maybe it'd be a good idea to put uh, you know some four inch angle all the way across there and you can lay cribbing in there so leaving this like this is probably a good idea the brackets that were on these, they're not at an exact 90. This one here, that's why they look like it's leaning. Um, the one is kind of cattywampus too, so it is what it is. We're not building a new truck. We're trying to help him out and keep his budget low, and we're reusing what we can. So we're going to mark our holes and get this thing ready to go on there. I got the air tank just plumbed into my shop there and the suspension's aired up. I just wanted to show you how nicely this works. I got a air gauge up here. I just shut my compressor off so we're sitting at like 70 pounds. This is the only one I had. It's got broken glass, but it it's kind of a neat gauge because you can run two different uh, pressures on this gauge. It, it come from a Firestone airbag system that was on a truck I had. And, you know, again, we're trying to keep the cost as low as possible, so I'm digging up all these pieces, parts I have to help him. So, oh, I guess I can push this in now. I was making sure I had this in the right orientation before I went ahead and pushed it in. Nice tight fit. Okay. So now I'm just going to flip the switch. It lowers about three and a half inches, and then we just come back in. You'll see my pressure is going to drop, but I'm off shop air. It'll come up right to ride height. And as soon as it levels off. You hear the air stop okay it's gonna be the final test uh, I've got the air compressor set up but we're having a problem with the pressure switch it's not working well so we got 
He's gonna see if he can find another one, but we're gonna run the bed through its paces and this should be the end of it. And you'll see a point where the bed tries to push the truck forward. What that is, is that stabilizer bar at the very rear is hitting the ground. Someone's replaced the ram for that flip on the back. And that flip, it looks like it's designed to kind of raise up. You put it back where you want it and then you put that flip down. But uh, all in all, it's, it's not bad. All right, so you saw how it comes back like that. It, it actually lifts before it comes back. That's why you can't use a traditional end lock on that bed. So he's gonna come up with something on that. He needs a couple spacers here to keep that arm shoved in there. He's gonna take care of that. He's gonna wire the lights. Um, we're not doing anything with the bulkhead. We have the compressor in here. This is a 110 compressor. And just, this is just a scrap piece of three quarter plywood in here I bolted it through the plywood through the the uh, toolbox because I was afraid that it's so heavy that if we put it all just on that toolbox it would just break and crack it all to pieces so we put that in there that's what he had uh, that is a 110 volt compressor it was out of a snap-on truck it was run off an inverter so uh, what we did was we stuck that in there and plumbed it in it's supposed to make 100 PSI. That's what it's supposed to be able to produce. Uh, that, that pressure switch, we're having troubles with it. It's supposed to turn on at 95 and off at 125, but it's turning on at 35 and off at about 60. So we're trying to get another one of those. And we put, he has an inverter in here. I would have much rather put just a 12 volt compressor in here been done with it and that's that but uh, he wanted to use what he had so we're also gonna put some vents over here to let some cross flow air put some vents on the either end so we can get cross airflow inside there so we don't overheat that compressor so he has this inverter and what we've done with the inverter is we brought um, two cables a negative right here positive here positive has a circuit breaker I believe it's a 80 amp circuit breaker it comes up here to the solenoid this is what's called a continuous duty solenoid the key is off now now watch listen when I turn that on okay so the whole time the keys on this activates when the key is off it's deactivated so there's no continuity it's not supplying any pow power to the inverter um, that was a, the safest way I could think of doing this where it was controlled by the ignition so we don't have this on all the time and if there's an air leak you don't want that thing running all the time. He's going to put a throttle lock right in here so he can raise the RPMs because it works better right at like uh, 900 RPMs. It's idling somewhere around 650 so if you raise it just a little bit the bed works better. Now the bed squeaks and you know makes racket when it goes back because it's kind of rusty uh, he's going to clean those up and grease everything up real good so that'll be taken care of he's going to take care of these you need a couple spacers in here so those arms don't come down and hit the toolboxes he's going to take care of that the bed works it functions no hydraulic leaks anywhere even the ram back here that was leaking quit leaking 
and uh, doing pretty good. So he's going to find me a pressure switch. I'm going to put that on real quick, and uh, that's going to be the end of this one. He'll be off and running. I got the air compressor pressure switch all uh, fixed up and finished. I ended up finding one myself, and the one I found, um, it had enough ports on it that I didn't have to have any fittings, no adapters, no T's. I could clean up that whole plumbing uh, setup really nice. So I took it all apart and did it like that. And I also installed a, a coupling for an air hose so you could air up tires on whatever you're, you're loading. <coughs> or on the truck itself if need be. I cycled the pump for, uh, up and down, you know, as far as pressure works just fine. The bed's working just fine. I've got some properties I need to go mow because it's been raining a lot and I need to get these things handled. So I thought, well, I'll just take the truck, you know, give it a test drive and throw these mowers on and go do what we got to do. Now the mowers, I understand, are not a very big load for this truck, but it is what it is. It's better than nothing. Now, since this video, since this was recorded, I did end up putting my one-ton Dodge, my dually on it, and it did it just fine. The only <clears throat> um, improvement I think we could make on the bed itself for the operation is he's going to grease it real well, and then he's going to put a throttle lock cable so he can raise the RPMs to about 950 or 1,000, and that would make the bed move faster and, and I wouldn't say smoother, but probably just faster. But all in all, it's, I think it's going to work pretty well for him. So we're all finished up here. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you guys like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, guys, and we'll catch you on the next build.